Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed my last video where I tried to solve some made in one puzzles with the help of my daughter, but I actually need to work on regular puzzles, so that's what we're going to do today. Let's see what happens. Okay, once again we're on Lee Chess. I think I can check with the knight, and the only way out, because my bishop cuts off these squares, um, mostly that one, that I think they would have to capture with the pawn, and then I would have... Oh, the queen then would be guarding here. I could check here, and if the queen blocked, I could just take it, and I think that would be mate, right? Check here, they have to take. Then I could win the queen. Oh, but no, it's not free because they're bishops guarding. So yeah, I would check here. They, I think they would have to block with the queen, and then I would take it, and that would be mate. Okay, let's try that. Okay, well, I got one. Oh, I got 14 points for it, as you can see down there at the lower edge of your screen, right down there. And if I scroll up, you can see that my puzzle rating on Lee Chess is 1918. Okay, let's click the thumbs up, which on Lee Chess is how you get to the next puzzle. They have just moved this pawn forward, but we know that's a mistake because of the way puzzles are constructed. What can I do? I can't move this pawn, and it looks like they're about to, uh, I'm about to be in a little bit of trouble here. I can capture this past pawn. Let's see, if I did that, what would they do? I think they might advance this again. This is what I'm looking for as an endpoint, by the way. I'm seeing my knight going here to g5, and then my rook eventually being down here on d8, which would be checkmate, because my knight would be cutting off these two squares from the king, and my rook would be checking across that way. So that's what I was thinking of. If I capture here, they come forward. I don't know that, it's gonna, that I'm going to have time because if I move the knight then, then they're going to check me here. And I have to move out of check one way or the other. And they're going to be able to win my rook. And yes, I would get it back, but then I would have lost my chance for checkmate. So I'm not sure exactly what to do first. I suppose I could put my knight here, protecting that square. Oh, and I would also be threatening this pawn with that knight. So I don't know if that's good or not. And I don't know what they would do in that case. Maybe they would attack this pawn. Let's see, that would protect this square as w it would also uh, threaten that pawn, but then the pawn would move up, threatening my knight. But then I could move the knight here, but then they would move that pawn up, threatening my knight again. And then what would I do? Oh, maybe, I, what if I just put my king down here? The rook is trapped. I think that might be the answer, is to get their rook. Because my mate plan didn't work. Like I said, I was looking at this, this, and then this, but that takes too long, right? Because they're going to do that, they're going to do this. I couldn't take that pawn because my pawn is pinned. So I think I need to, I need to trap their rook, not there, right here, right now. I'm going to try that. Oh, that was it. Okay. I almost didn't see that. All right. Well, I, and I got nine points for that one, so I have... Crossed 2003 here on Lee Chess, which is now higher than my puzzle score in chess.com for the first time in a while. Okay. Their king is kind of trapped in there. If my rook, if my rook was on a2, cutting off this entire rank, then I would go here and that would be checkmate. But as it stands, if I put my rook on e2 first, a2, sorry, then they're going to move one of these pawns forward and check me. And I won't be able to take it. I will have to move back. And I'll start, I'll, I'll get in trouble pretty quick. So maybe I need to check first. Because their king can't come in here. My king is cutting off that square on f4. I'm getting better. I'm trying to remember to say the names of the pieces. Or, or the squares, I mean. So yeah, if I, if I check on h4, their king can't come forward. It has to go back to one of those. Then I could check here on h2, a2, wow, getting my a and h files mixed up. I would check on a2, which would drive the king to the back rank somewhere, depending on which one of those uh, original second rank squares it had moved to. For example, if it had gone here and I checked, then it wouldn't have to go to the back rank. It could come around. So I think, but I think that's got to be the first move, because again, if I don't, they're going to check me. If I take this, I still think they're going to check me. With one of those and if i move my rook first they're going to check me with one of those pawns i don't know which one i don't know which one would be best 
but I'm pretty sure that's what they're going to do. And then when I move back, they're going to move their king forward into whichever square they didn't take up. That makes me think they would probably check here. If I moved my rook first, they would probably check here on f4. And then when I moved back, which I would have to do, I think they might try to slip their king in here to win my h-pawn. And then they could check again while guarding that square with their king. And I would have to go even further back. So yeah, the check has to be first. I'm pretty sure. I can't do anything about their rook right now. I don't think. Okay, that was it. Okay, and they did go the smartest way. At least I think that was the smartest way because it gives them an extra out here. So that makes me wonder if I shouldn't put my king here first. Which would block off these two. Well, the pawn's already blocking off g3. But my king then would block off e3. They can't get to it just yet. Or they could try, but I would capture. So yeah, if I move my king here first, blocking off those squares, then this check becomes much more like a mating threat because then they have to go to the back rank. I can capture this uh, f-pawn. So I think the king move is next. Okay, that was right. They went in here, I guess, looking for that pawn or afraid to take this one. So now checking with my rook on a2 is the most sensible option. It drives their king back to one of those three squares. Again, I assume they're going to try to centralize it. But then, but then I take this pawn, and I think I'm starting to get them into a mating sequence. Oh, that was the end of the puzzle. Okay. I guess because at that point, it didn't, maybe it didn't matter as much which way they went, and then it wouldn't matter as much which way I went. Okay. Wow, I, I think that's the first time on Lee Chess on a regular puzzle thing that I've ever gotten three puzzles in a row. Uh, I've, and I've never done, I don't think, a video session where I tried to do 30 straight minutes of just puzzles on Lee Chess. This is my first time. Yeah, I know I did Mates and Ones. I, I did a demonstration video on the puzzles by theme or puzzles by opening. But yeah, I think this is my first one where I just did the randomized puzzles in a straight session for the video. I've tried it a couple of times, but never for 30 minutes because I've never got, I don't think I've ever gotten three in a row. Next puzzle. Ooh, threatening a queen trade. I do have a couple of checks, though. I have this check, but in that case, they could just take it. No, they couldn't because their queen is pinned. Their queen is now pinned. Maybe that's the problem with them moving their queen there. I don't think taking the queen is the best play here just because they have a variety of ways they could capture back. Uh, not to mention just moving out of check, but I don't think they would. They would take back, right? But I think I can take advantage of the fact that their queen is pinned. And I can check either here or, or here. One advantage of checking on c7 is that my bishop then would continue cutting off these squares from the king. And it couldn't go that way. But it could go this way. Or it could come toward my knight. So what about this? That, that blocks my own bishop so the king could just move forward out of check. But then I could move my knight and threaten to queen. So if I check there... Yeah, if it moves to one of those two squares to get out of the check, then anywhere I move my knight is check from the bishop. But it could move... No, it can't move there because my knight would be cutting off that square from here. So it could go that way. And if it went that way... Let's see, if I check on D3... No, D6. The other side of the board. If I check with my knight on D6 and the king went that way, then I could check here and win the queen on the fork. So I think that square seems better. I think d6 seems better than c7 for the reasons that I just said. So I'm going to try that. Okay, that was it, and it, it came forward. So now anywhere I move my knight is check from the bishop. Discover check. So the question should become, which way should I move the knight? I would like to go here with it, because that would win the queen for a knight. With the discovered check, once they move out of check, then I would take the queen with the knight. But let me see if there's anything better. For example, if I move the knight over here, the king can just take it. If I move the knight over here, the king can just move out of check a variety of ways. Well, three different ways. If I move the knight over here, same thing. The king then has even more options to get out of check. If I move the knight this way, I don't think that's good. I, th I think it has to be here, right? Knight to c4, which is check with from the bishop, and my knight is attacking the queen. Let's hope that's it. It was it. 
Oh, they took him a bishop with the knight, so now I get the queen for a knight. That has to be it. Okay, it was. It says success. You can see the first part of it behind my camera view. If I move my camera out of the way, you can see success. Okay. Four in a row. Oh, and I got 20 points for that? They do the points differently on Lee Chess. I think one thing different is that there's no timer, or there doesn't seem to be a timer. I think you just get points. And if I scroll down, you can see that this puzzle was rated 2099 right here. It was from a Blitz game. Okay. But on chess.com, the longer it takes you, the fewer points you get all the way down to the, whatever the minimum is, five points. But on Lee Chess, it seems to not, the time doesn't seem to matter. But I know that if you miss a puzzle, you lose a lot. I, I've lost as many as, I think, 40-something points on one puzzle for missing it in the past. But anyway, next puzzle. Ooh, anywhere I move this is check. So let's see, where should we move the... Ooh, also I have these. Goodness, my, my bishop is just doing a lot right now. One question is, should I check first with the rook down there on c8? And the reason that I'm suggesting that is because if I move the knight first, I don't know where I would move it, here? No, because that would block my rook. And I, I think I want my rook to come down here at some point, but I don't know if I want it to go first. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Do I want my rook to go down to c8 first, or do I want to have the discover check with my bishop first by moving the knight? And then if so, where would I move the knight? Not there, as I've just said, because that blocks my rook. I think here, while it does help threaten this rook, and leaves the path open for my rook, and discovers the check from my bishop, I think there are some problems with that, and I'm trying to figure out exactly what they are. That's the hard part of moving the knight first, is I'm not sure where to do it. But if I move the rook first, rook to c8 check, the king can, obviously at that point could not go left or right because my rook is cutting off all those squares and my knight's cutting off this one. So that would force it in here. And of course my rook's cutting off that square too. So then when I move my knight here, opening up the bishop check, oh, but then my knight's not guarding that spot anymore. So the king would get out of check that way. I could follow with the rook check to g8, but then the king can get out this way, challenging my knight. That gets pretty complicated. I mean, and then I could hop in here with my knight to check the king over there on h6, but then the king would go this way, and I'm just chasing it. And also, as I noticed right at the beginning, my bishop always has the option of taking one of these rooks. I think I, I think I have to play the rook first just because it's more forcing. It forces the king here. I don't know, and I don't want to spend any more time on this, so I'm going to move the rook down to c8. Okay, that was correct, and as we knew, the king had to go there. There are other ways to discover this check. One is here. Yeah, any place I move the knight is check. I mean, even, the, even those two would technically be check. What about that one? Because it couldn't take it, but the king would still be able to move over there. That's the thing. At this point, no matter where I move my knight, we know the king is going to end up on g7, and I can't guard g7 after I've moved my knight. Wait. Oh, wow. I almost didn't see that. That's mate, isn't it? It didn't have to do with the discovered check at all. Just the fact that the bishop is protecting the knight and the knight is guarding those two squares. I almost didn't see that, but I did see it and I got 20 points for it. All right. Well, go me. Okay. Ooh, openings puzzle. This feels like an opening. Maybe it's in the middle game because we're missing... We're each missing two pawns, but we both have all our pieces. So I, uh, to me, this still feels like an opening. We've, they've exchanged, they've exchanged their E and D pawns or D and E pawns, and I've exchanged my C and D pawns for those two at some point. Well, their queen is is being hit, but so is mine. So they went danger levels. When I, I must have just moved this bishop out to threaten their queen, and their mistake was threatening my queen. How can we punish that mistake? I, I can move my queen out of danger, but then my bishop's undefended. Oh, that's... Well, I don't know. Yeah, if, if I move my queen right now, they can't take my queen anymore, but then they could just take my bishop. So I don't think that's it. And I can't move my queen here, obviously, because of their knight. What happens if I just take their queen and they take mine? And then I could take their bishop, and I suppose they could take my knight at that point, and then I could take their pawn. 
or take their knight and then and then they would take my my bishop i don't see anything else I, like i'm not seeing a check i'm not seeing like a, se a separate way to protect my queen while also to continue threatening theirs like there's not a some sort of i mean that's a check but they just take it i'm really not sure i think i should just take their queen I, I I could be wrong, but I it, this is one of those this is one of the puzzles that I'm weakest at. I know that from my extensive experience doing puzzles on chess.com, the ones that are very close to the opening, <clears throat> just after the opening, right into the beginning of the middle game or at the end of the opening, those are the ones that I struggle with the most. And that's also a place that I'm very weak in actual games. I'm pretty good with the opening moves that I've memorized, and I and I usually know why those moves are good out to about move seven or eight. But then right then, if you follow my little graphs on the game review, it's almost always here at this point in the game where I blunder and then either get worse and worse and lose or eventually recover and win. Sometimes my opponent blunders so bad and right after the opening or during the opening that I stay ahead the whole time. But a lot of times I've noticed I, 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 get, I go down right at this point in the game. But I'm going to take the queen. That was it. And they did take mine. Earlier I had said to do this, and, and, and assuming that they would take my knight at that point. But what if I just went here, took that pawn. That leaves their knight hanging. If they take it, I'll take back. What else? Do I have anything else? My choices here are either to take this pawn and then do the exchange here, or take the bishop and see if they take my knight, and then try to escape, or take, or take their knight back. Or again, is there something else that I'm missing? I could castle. I think probably castling is still okay here or should I take the knight if I take the knight don't they take my bishop but if I take here they take there I assume if I take their knight they would take my bishop probably not with the pawn I'm guessing I'm assuming they would take with their bishop because that would help them a develop a piece and b not damage their pawn structure oh but they, no if they did that I'd be able to take back maybe that's it Maybe I have to take their knight first because it protects the bishop. No, but then they would take it with the pawn. Those are my choices, right? I could just escape with the bishop, but then they're still going to do this and damage my pawn structure. Well, time's ticking, so I'm going to take their bishop, which is my original plan. That was it. Oh my goodness. So my, the plan that I thought of in the very beginning of this puzzle is what's correct. So now the question is, do I save my bishop? Or do I or do I take the knight? Or save my bishop this way? You know what? I think because their rook is more important. Oh, that's a fork. They're gonna they're gonna have to save their rook, and I'll get the knight. Okay. Oh my goodness, I am very surprised that I got that. All right, what's look at that? 2067 is my new puzzle rating. I have time for another one? Uh, so let's do it. I pretty impressed with myself right now that I haven't missed one yet, but it's very possible that I will end this video by missing a puzzle. I just wanted to do something that was a little different than the puzzles I've been doing on chess.com. And these are definitely different. I've lost my queen. However, however, that's check. And the king cannot move because my knight and bishop are cutting off those squares. And they can't capture there. They would have to block with their queen. And then once they did that, their queen would be pinned. That would be mate. No, it wouldn't because they could move there. Oh, but then I would win their queen and it would be mate. Right? That check. They can't come out this way because of my knight. Oh my. And I'm at my clock, I don't know if I've edited this video by the time you've seen it, so it might be shorter, but right now I'm showing 27 minutes, so I have time for one more. Let's do that. Because I'm, I'm on kind of a roll. Um, ooh, they've doubled up their rooks next to my king. Maybe I shouldn't have done another. But I do have a protected check right down there on g2 with my bishop guarding. But they would just move out of check to here or here. And whichever one of those that they moved to, I would have a follow-up check with my knight. Now, if they had moved to the corner, the follow-up check with my knight would be made. So let's assume that if I check here, they'll move that way to f1. Oh, but then I could move my rook anywhere, like here, and it would be a discovered check with the bishop. That's got to be my best, my first move, right? That's got to be my first move. They don't have any pieces guarding that square. They don't have any way to block. 
Again, if they went that way, then this would be mate. And if they go that way, I can take the bishop with discovered check. And we can figure it out from there. Or I could probably bring my knight in and try to figure something else after that. So let's try that. Okay, that was it. And they did go that way like I thought. What's the downside of this? If I check with the knight on g3, my, my rook is still protected and my rook is cutting off these squares. So that would force the king here. And you can't block a knight check. So there's no blocking involved. And no piece can capture. So it would have to go to e1. And would my rook there be mate? I think that's mate. It was mate. Okay. Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in a row on Lee Chess. That's a record for me. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.